Hi, my name is Bruno and I started Remark sometime last year in August and I'm going to briefly explain what it is and what it's not and why I made it. So last year sometime in August I noticed the NFT craze on Ethereum heating up again and I was um, at the time as I was working on some stuff for the Kusama blockchain which is the canary network for Polkadot's blockchain um, I noticed that Kusama had evolved into this art-friendly, cypherpunk-friendly, experimentation-friendly blockchain that uh, developed its own kind of community around it. And I figured because of this new attitude of this blockchain, it would be a shame if it missed out on the coming NFT craze. And so I figured we could reuse the idea from colored coins back in the Bitcoin days and actually put some graffiti on the chain that would simulate um basically nft values and why this this was necessary is because kusama is a relay chain and a relay chain is meant to connect other blockchains together with each other so that they can share features but in order to do that effectively the relay chain has to be light and it cannot be light if it has smart contracts because everybody could deploy a lot of things on it and so because it doesn't have smart contracts uh, you can't really write logic on top of it and nfts are by definition smart contracts and logic and so what I've basically come up with was use the colored coin method of writing custom messages to the chain and interpreting them in a special way to basically emulate this logic. So you can imagine it as going through town and seeing the, a picture of an upside down devil on, on, a, on a wall of a building. And then um, if you were like a civilian, you would think that's, that's a nice graffiti or you would think that vandals did that and it's not nice but you would you would not care otherwise but if you were um, if you were a member of the um, of the regular devil's gang and you saw an upside down devil painted on on the side of a building you would know to interpret this as a symbol of danger that you should not go further because you're going to get um, attacked by a rival gang and so this is possible because these gangs share a common language they share an understanding of what these graffiti mean when they encounter each other's tags in the street they know what this means they know to interpret uh, a custom value from it and this is basically what remark does so remark is a protocol or um, to be more specific remark is a set of rules and specifications for how to interpret special messages submitted to the blockchain these messages are called remarks and that's why the protocol is called remark rmrk pronounced remark uh, what the way we do it is we package up some values into a message and then we just send that message into the chain now these remark messages they don't actually change the state of the chain uh, they don't change the um, there's no smart contract that gets its values updated instead these messages are just listed alongside the blocks of the blockchain and so to get to the final state to the to the to to to, to, to have a final database of all the nfts in the system you have to read all of these messages back to the beginning and then kind of consolidate them squash them into one final truth and that's a downside of the remark protocol because there's no smart contract to reference you always have to do this rechecking um, and that's that's a downside we're, we're kind of um, we have to accept here w without smart contracts but what this allows us to do is be very very creative and develop very very quickly to create some very interesting innovations on top of the nft ecosystems out there uh, the nft ecosystems we've built using these custom messages on remark especially with the upcoming remark 2.0 release um, is actually more advanced without smart contracts than any other system out there for nfts with smart contracts and this is because we have uh, a few distinguishing features for one we have nested nfts and this means that nfts can own other nfts um, you can think of it as in-game characters having an inventory and then one character can send an item to another character who can equip it um, this is obviously not the only use case but is one of the most popular ones that we expect to be uh, for this to be used for um, we also have conditional rendering this means that depending on a certain condition on or off chain a NFT can show a different resource for example imagine if um, you owned the NFT to the Mona Lisa painting which is sitting in the Louvre and you had a button on your wallet which when you click it could turn the Mona Lisa red and so this is a pretty powerful statement because a lot of people are looking at that painting at the same time and you being able to do that is 
is a is a pretty big power play, right? So you have these conditional rendering operations that can trigger based on some conditions, either initiated by the owner of the NFT or even some other conditions like is the block is the current block number even or odd? Um, is uh, do, does this NFT have a hundred siblings in the same collection? Uh, stuff like that. We also added in on-chain emoticons so that you can emote to NFTs on-chain. Um, this is useful as not only a kind of gamification me mechanic, but also as a uh, market discovery uh, method. Because when people react to an NFT without bidding on it, um, they express interest in it in some other way. And so you are able to gauge interest in an NFT without actually this NFT being on the market or, or be without trying to sell it or trying to get people to buy it, which is, which is pretty interesting. Um, we also have multi-resource NFTs, which means that if you load, for example, if you have an NFT that uh, represents a 3D model of something, this 3D model NFT can have uh, different resources attached to it. It can have a thumbnail, it can have a high resolution photo, and it can have the 3D object file itself. And if you load that NFT into something like Maya or 3ds Max or whatever 3D program is popular today, um, it will automatically know to load the 3D file. If you show it in OpenSea as the NFT marketplace, then it will automatically know to show you the high resolution photo. And if you load it in a search results page somewhere, it will automatically default to the thumbnail. So this is quite popular. Uh, this is quite powerful here. And um, and when you when you put all of this uh, together, you kind of end up with these um, art Legos, which you can put together and compose into truly complex, ever evolving NFTs that can react to the evolving ecosystem around them. So they are no longer uh, things that gather digital dust in your wallet once you buy them. They're no longer static images or whatever else you buy with as, as NFTs. They're no longer a set of, you know, a, a pixel art uh, or whatever you, you, you bought for who knows how much. Instead, they are now utility bearing NFTs that can change and evolve over time that you will love to have and use in your wallet and that you will apply to different um, contexts and different purposes. For example, you can now apply to one such NFT. Uh, for example, if the decentralized exchange SushiSwap came to Moonbeam and so they offer you the ability to provide liquidity in one of their pools for tokens and you earn a certain percentage per year, this APY, right? This annual percentage yield um, on, on that action that you do, on that farming, so, so to speak. And so once you, when you're doing that, uh, you're, you're earning some kind of fees, but also they can then publish an NFT that your NFT will be able to equip. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, maybe your NFT is, a, is an in-game character. And if you get a Sushi bracelet onto your character, then if you log into SushiSwap with that wallet, then SushiSwap can detect that you have an NFT with that bracelet and they can give you a higher yield. And so you have these benefits that you can apply to your NFTs. And if you don't like them, you can just swap them out later and equip something else, depending on which DeFi farm you're at uh, at that moment. And as you run out of space on one NFT, you can purchase another one or you can you have to choose and prioritize which ones you'll equip and so on. So it turns this entire DeFi and NFT ecosystem into one big game um, and into one evolving ecosystem, one evolving space that can move along with the innovations in the in the in the space as it ha as, as they happen. And so we're very excited to to show you what Remark can do. Uh, we already have partnerships with some uh, blockchains that will be connecting to Kusama and Polkadot from day one. So we will be uh, rewriting Remark as also native level code for the unique blockchain, which is an NFT focused blockchain, and also as smart contracts for EVM based blockchains like Moonbeam and others, so that we cover the most ground. We will, of course, stay Kusama native, but we will expand the functionality of Remark by expanding to these other sister chains that will connect to Kusama. So we want to have the biggest reach so that you can take your NFTs everywhere you want and so that we can form partnerships with projects on all of these different chains, uh, a lot of which are already in progress. So we are very excited to tell you what uh, we've got in store for you. Um, and we think you're going to like where we're taking these NFTs from their uh, current static nature and into a long running utility version of this collectible uh, art.